Hello, hello everyone. Good afternoon. It is about 5.15 here in California. And as you can see, we are live on Facebook. I want to say welcome to everyone. Uh, normally we do these free classes um, in the mornings for California time, um, which would be normally it's on Friday mornings because that's kind of when this the students usually can, um, can join us, right? But um, this student is the winner, of course, of our free class from our Monday speaking practice. So I've had a couple students actually ask, teacher, how can I win? How can I join you in a free class like this? And the truth is you have to join us on Mondays for the free speaking practice because that's where we do the, um, the raffle or the giveaway, right? We choose one random student that attends that class to win this class today. And so this free live uh, Facebook live class that we normally do is usually, um, like I said, it's normally towards the end of the week. So usually on Thursdays or Fridays, um, typically it's in the morning. It just really depends on the student's uh, schedule and my schedule, of course. But um, today, as you can see, we already have Karina um, waiting for us in the waiting room. And um, so while I let her in, while I admit her, um, go ahead and say hi in the comments. I've got you guys all on, on my separate screen over here. Say hi in the comments. Where are you guys joining us from? Where are you watching us from? And we hope that we can help you out today. Let's see. Ooh, all right. Hello, Karina, of course. Hello. Hey, Gokarna. Hello. How are you? I'm doing well. All righty. Karina, can you hear me okay? Yes, I can hear you. Nice. Clear. Nice. Very, very good. I'm glad. I'm glad. Um, so you're okay. Yeah, your camera turned off for a second, but we're all good. I can see you and I can hear you. Nice. Very good. So really quickly, we've got Gokarna who's watching us on the Facebook live. Um, he says good morning. So good morning, wherever you are. Gokarna, where are you? I forget where you are. And then we've got Best Vang. Um, I've never seen your name before. Welcome to our Facebook Live classes. Hi, where are you from? Where are you watching us from? Let us know in the comments. Remember, this class is specifically for you, Karina, um, but we do it on Facebook Live so that we can hopefully help out many, many more students, right? Um, so whether people are able to watch us live right now or they watch you know, the recorded video of this, then um, hopefully the, the goal at the end of the day is just to help out as many people as possible. So um, Karina, tell me, you wanted to talk about writing professional emails. Is this something you do uh, for work or just tell me a little bit about this? Yes, that is correct. Um, it's for work. Okay. I usually, um, um, I, like, I would like to know uh, when sending emails out um, to department manager, directors, um, you know, how on a, on a professional level, how can I start an email? Uh, and I would like to know the, the differences. It's like for someone that I work with, that like if I'm requesting um, information to do my work or outside of my organization where um, you know, I'm, I'm asking for information or inviting, like the differences for someone that I work with mm -hmm. or someone that, you know, I don't. Okay. Yeah. Sounds good. Yeah. I know you said you wanted to write emails in a professional setting. Do you mind telling us a little bit about your work? Um, what exactly makes this a professional setting? <clears throat> Well, um, some of my duties are, um, you know, I, um, I record the meeting. So before the meeting starts, I have to create an agenda. So I have to request information from the manager to okay. be able to touch the agenda. So I usually would, I usually like to send information, the agenda without the items that are going to be on the agenda. And I would actually like to send information, the agenda to the department managers or staff. Mm -hmm. Initially, when I start my emails, I've been told that I'm very direct. Okay. So I want to kind of like, you know, uh, you know, what's direct and what's, what's res uh, respectful. Mm -hmm. I usually just say, please be reminded to send by this day. And that I've been told, I would like to remind you or the differences. <laughs> I've also heard, oh, 
please send it to me at your earliest convenience. I'm like, um, nine? No, that doesn't, <laughs> I don't know, for me it doesn't click, you know, yeah. at your earliest convenience, so I'm not giving them a thing. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of like saying, uh, it's, it's, some people call it in uh, colloquial or day-to-day -day speak, we say it's office talk, right, um, where you would say, like you said, at your er earliest convenience, but really, in normal day-to-day -day talk, that just means send it to me right now. <laughs> it's like, it's like, yeah, whenever you have time, but right now. <laughs> yeah, well, in my case, well, since I have to build the agenda package and I have to, have to meet deadlines, legal okay. legal day, deadlines, I have to have a certain information by a certain day in order for me to build the agenda and I have to post it by, you know, legal deadline. So it's yeah. not like send it to me at the earliest convenience. I'm not giving them really a thing. Yeah. Okay, sounds good. So yeah, I think so basically what I have prepared for you, I have some templates that I can give you. Um, but of course, just like with um, whenever it comes to writing and speaking, I've said this many times before, it's always a little difficult to teach. Um, you know, you know, some teachers, some students ask me teacher, what do I say in this situation? And it, it, to me, it's just every situation is different. And so whatever you say and whatever you write depends on so many factors so specifically for this when you're writing in a professional setting like you are at work it's you know it depends on who you're writing to it depends on what you're writing you know what are you trying to to say what information are you trying to get you know it's, it just depends on all of that kind of stuff do you have already a um a more friendly relationship with the person you're emailing or is it like your boss and, and even then is your boss cool you know like where you could be really cool with your boss or is your boss super strict right so it just depends on so yeah. many factors so yeah like the difference is between I guess you know like if I've mentioned something to my boss and later on I'll just is it okay to some FYI with capital letters that 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 uh please remember the be reminded that I'll be taking yeah day off so please be reminded that uh, yeah. I'll be take, taking the afternoon off you know something like that so yeah yeah exactly yeah so again it just depends um, you know everything when it comes to speaking and writing it always depends on a lot of things so let me go ahead and share my screen I've prepared some um, some slides for us hopefully they help um, uh, and I also have some templates for you. So, Karina, are you able to see my screen well? Yes. Oh, nice. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Okay. I made it big, so hopefully this helps a little bit. Um, yeah, the warm okay. All righty. And for those of you watching us on the Facebook Live, um, Gokarna from Nepal. Very cool. I haven't seen you or heard from you in a while, so I'm sorry I forgot where you were from. But thank you so much for watching. Um, and those of you watching us on the Facebook Live, if you can't see any of my slides, of course, let me know in the comments. Um, maybe I can make the font bigger or maybe I can just read everything. Um, I, I will be reading everything on the screen anyway. But um, if you have any questions, of course, just go ahead and ask. So let's go ahead and get started. So understanding how to write a professional email will help you draft effective communications for any workplace needed. Um, basically, I, I have five steps here that will hopefully help you write a professional email specifically for work purposes. So I have, I'm going to go ahead into more detail with these five steps, but I, after these, I explain these five steps, I'm also going to provide you some uh, templates and these templates are going to be depending, of course on uh, the situation. So whether you're requesting something, maybe you're trying to say thank you for an interview, maybe you're trying to say, in your case, Karina, maybe you're trying to say thank you for a meeting, um, you know, just different situations. So first and foremost, you've got to create an informative sub subject line. So we all know uh, the um, what an email um, box or window looks like, right? You usually have your two and uh, sometimes you have a, what is it, a BCC, a CC and a BCC, right? So those are your senders. Who are you sending it to? Uh, then you have a subject line, then you've got your body, and then you've got um, literally just like the send button and then some other uh, ways to, add, to 
alternate your writing basically be you know the fonts the size all of that good stuff but important um what i'm talking about most importantly right now is the subject line so in that subject box um that's basically a one sentence maybe even less honestly a short one sentence um explaining what the following email is going to be about right so um a lot of people do re so regarding uh yesterday's meeting or regarding um leaving work early you know something super short super concise that just kind of tells whoever is going to read this email um yeah, exactly what the email is going to be about right number two provide a polite greeting so usually i'm gonna i'm gonna explain this a little bit more but providing a polite greeting normally it's like a hello or a dear yeah number three of course you always have to address the point immediately um unlike a unlike a let's say a letter to a friend or even an email to a friend um some you may say something more like you know um, um, <laughs> my vacation is going great or you know you might kind of veer off the topic a little bit in this case because you're writing a professional email you just got to kind of get to the point yeah um number four of course include a clear call to action and of course i'll explain this again later on um and then number five close with your contact information this generally speaking when you're writing a professional email it's very similar to writing a letter um the only difference of course is that it's electronic and uh your contact information you don't always have to include in a letter right it, again it depends on who you're writing the letter to so let's go ahead and jump into each um, each point specifically. So number one, create an informative subject line. So the subject line lets your recipient know, so the person who's receiving the email, what to expect. And that's super important because I am sure you know you get lots and lots of emails on a daily basis. You kind of just kind of look at the emails, the subjects, and just think, oh, I don't, that's not important, that's not important, that's not important, oh, this one's important, open, right? So this definitely helps whoever is receiving the email know that this is important and what, it, what this email is going to be about. Um, so like I said, the subject has to be super concise, super short, um, like I, the examples that I gave. Um, you don't you could i do suggest using the re which is short for regarding meaning um this is about is kind of what that means um but you could say something like uh agenda prep meeting or information for agenda you know something like that you know at least it gives like i said it gives the reader enough information to know what the email is going to be about does this make sense yeah. Nice. Any questions about this? No. Nice. Very good. So number two, like I said, you got to start off with a polite greeting, right? So normally we'll start off with hello or dear. Um, in the case of a, in the case of a professional email, again, if you have a closer more friendlier relationship with this with the person you're emailing then you could start off with greetings you could start off with mrs or mr these type of greetings though these type of words though to start off an email they're seen a little bit more friendly so it's a little bit more informal is the word yeah um, i usually start my emails with Good afternoon, Mr. So mm -hmm. good, good morning, Mrs. That's really, that's all, that's how I start out. Like, that to me, that's very important. You know, uh, I don't know, it just, it doesn't, I don't, I wouldn't, when it, I don't want to say annoying or, or that it bothers me where somebody just like, oh, you know, this and this and that. I'm like, wow, <laughs> uh, good morning. And I, I usually just reply, oh, yeah. good morning. Yes, blah, 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 I respond to whatever. I'm like, really? Mm -hmm. It's like walking into somebody else's house and, or a, a party and don't even say hi. <laughs> and honestly, that's funny. It's nice that you bring that up. That might be a cultural thing, right? It could be a cultural thing. 
It could be um, an age thing as well. Uh, you know, older people, if they're writing an email, for example, to someone younger, they might not feel the need to greet you. Yeah. Or vice versa. Maybe some a younger person maybe is not as respectful or maybe in their culture, it's okay to just say Karina or just say the name. So it's, it's kind of like what we talk about in our WhatsApp speaking group. It's we talk a lot because we're constantly sharing our opinions. Um, I constantly bring up, oh, I don't agree with this, but you're entitled to your opinion, right? We just have to respect each other and that's kind of it. And so, but at the same time, kind of like what you just said, where you respond back with a good morning or a good afternoon, then you're kind of training that person to greet you. Does that make sense a little bit? It hasn't worked. <laughs> for, for years. Yeah. And it hasn't worked. But I, I mean, I, that's just how I am. That's how I mean, it's for just respect. Yeah. It doesn't matter. It's good morning. Yeah. I'm and just used to that, doing yeah. that. Yeah. And that's okay. Like we said, we just have to respect each other enough to, um, to just respect each other's cultures, you could say, or, or habits even, um, even though I believe habits can be broken, but, um, yeah, maybe they just don't feel that need. And so that's where we just have to respect that. Right. Um, but yeah, if you're starting off your email with a good morning, a good afternoon, even a good evening, uh, if you need to, of course, and of course, it depends on the work setting um, that is also seen as polite. Uh, I wouldn't necessarily say that it's formal or informal. It's just polite. That's really all it is. Yeah. Okay. All right. Number three. So the, now we're getting into the actual body, the actual oomph of the email. Yeah. So address the point immediately. So because this is a professional email, a lot of people don't have time to be reading, you know, a whole life story before you get to the point of why you're emailing them, right? So you just kind of have to be concise. You kind of have to just tell them what you want to tell them, right? Um, I learned this, I believe, in fifth grade when we were learning how to write the five paragraph essay. The introduction is always, in the introduction, I tell you what I'm going to tell you the three body paragraphs i tell you what i'm going what i'm telling you and then the conclusion is the summary the last conclusion paragraph is always the i'm telling you what i already told you does that make sense oh wow. yeah so that's kind of yeah. how i learned the five paragraph essay in fifth grade but when it comes to a work email that kind of just goes out the window honestly it's just get to the point you know that's don't waste anyone's time kind of thing right um, and yeah, detail the necessary information as briefly as possible. So if you have to use bullet, uh, bullets, you know, those dots. So if you have to use numbers like a list, then I mean, anything you have to do to make it easier on the person to read the email and to just kind of get you the information or you get them the information as quick as possible. Does that make sense? Yes. All right. Number four, include a clear call to action. So really quickly, Karina, do you know what a call to action is? Um, asking them, like in my case, when I need information, mm -hmm. when do I need Bye. Yeah, it's exactly that, um, but a little bit when more. When I need it, when I need it. There you go, exactly. The call to action is, is, I mean, if you break it down to individual words, it's literally that, I am calling you to take action, right? So um, I don't know if you've seen many YouTube videos or Instagram videos or even uh, like Facebook posts where people say, they give you some sort of information and then they say, oh, don't forget to like, subscribe and comment and share and blah, 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 blah. That is the call to action. They're telling you what action they want you to take. Does that make sense? Yes. Perfect. So in an email, assuming that you need that person to do something right so you're not just reminding them like you said earlier that you're going to be taking off um taking off work early and um, maybe you need um let's say maybe you need a report. The, a report exactly maybe you need a report and you need it by this friday say so say today is thursday tomorrow's friday you send them an email today your call to action would be send me the report by Friday, September 10th, 
right? So that is yeah. literally the call to action. I'm telling you what I need you to do and by when I need it. Does that make sense? Yeah. Very good. So it sounds like you're kind of already doing some of these things, but um, let, let's go into number five and then we'll go into the templates, okay? Okay. All right, so closing with your contact information. I assume for your work emails, you already have some sort of- Signature template. There you go, yeah, some sort of saved signature. So you typically in yeah. a work setting, the signature of the, of the email usually already includes like, the, the respectfully name um position or my duck title mm -hmm. and the name of the company yeah exactly and i've even seen some signatures where the company information is also included so like a phone like a main phone number yeah. to contact like the company's like address or mailing address the facts, yeah. um the facts and some sort of disclaimer like if i mistake i send this, you know, we're sent to somebody to this is not useful, you know, this is private, you know, things like that. Yes, exactly, exactly. So <clears throat> at the very, very least, your closing or your signature should include kind of like you said, um, you know, it could be something like greetings or respectfully or best, best wishes. Regards, my, best regards. Exactly. Um, you know, something even as simple as thank you or thankfully, both of those work as well uh comma of course your name and then at the very minimum a phone number or like an email address some way that especially if you're asking for information some contact method that they can contact you from does that make sense yeah very good so just to oh where did my i wanted to kind of um what's it i wanted to summarize them and go over them just really quickly one more time so let me go back so we can see all of them so in a professional email, create the informative subject line, right? Most important. A polite greeting, which we already talked about. Dear, hello, good morning, good afternoon. Those are all polite. Address the point immediately. So don't tell your reader your whole life story or how your day is going. Just straight to the point. Um, and of course, include a call to action. So why are you actually emailing them? So even if you're just reminding them of something, that could still be the call to action, right? It could still be... Uh, please remember, I'm leaving yeah, work early. Yeah, just a reminder. Exactly, just a reminder. reminder. Exactly, and then of course, contact information, closing, um, closing the email out. So let's go ahead and jump into some templates, right? Really quickly, Ruslan is watching us. Hello, welcome. Uh, he says this is very interesting. So that's good. I'm glad. I'm glad you're finding this I'm interesting. Glad. Yeah. Good. All right. So I want to start off with a thank you email after an interview. So this. Um, I think this might be a little bit of a cultural thing, maybe. Um, where was it? Back in, I want to say in Mexican culture, maybe in American culture, I'm not 100% sure. Their uh, thank you cards used to be a thing. Um, I don't know if you yeah. know about it. Yeah, yeah. they are. Um, usually it was um, handwritten thank you cards, but now uh, with technology and all that stuff. Um, thank you emails are a thing, right? So if you are to write a thank you email, this is specifically for after an interview. So when you go into the job interview, um, you wanna write whoever interviewed you a, a thank you email, um, but you could also write a thank you email uh, after a meeting, after any other kind of professional situation. So in this case, dear whoever uh, interviewed you, Thank you for meeting with me today to discuss the um, administrative assistant position at XYZ Company. It was a pleasure to meet you and I enjoyed discussing uh, your cats. <laughs> it can be anything, literally. I think um, in this specific situation, in this specific, um, in these specific brackets, I would personally include something personal that we talked about, not specifically a job related um, topic, so if you do, I when I go in for job interviews, I always my main goal is always to make my interviewer laugh. That's always my main goal, and so and then somehow I do always also try to bring in some sort of personal conversation. So whether it's oh I almost cut my finger this weekend, how are you? You know something like that, 
because then that kind of helps the interviewer remember you a little bit better, right? And then of yeah. course, yeah, and then of course, if you're writing this thank you email afterwards, and I mean, and I enjoy discussing my finger cut with you, my emergency room visit this weekend, then of course they're gonna think, oh yeah, I remember that person. It's just, when it comes to interviews, it's more about remembering me, right? Because I'm going in for the interview. And I'm excited about the opportunity to lend my skills and my education and you know any kind of skills, specific skills if you want. Um, experience to the, you know, whatever department or whatever team you're talking about, as I believe I could be a valuable asset in your blank work. I look forward to hearing from you soon. Call to action. Please let me know if you need any additional information, right? Best regards. My name is Isabel Cortez. So this, again, is just a template in case of a, an interview. Um, the way that we could change this up, for example, if you wanted to send a thank you email for let's say people who attended your meeting. Maybe you are holding a meeting um, for like, per, uh, maybe you get together with all the other assistants, for example, and you all plan some meeting together. You can always send this as a thank you, right? Thank you for meeting with me today to discuss the um, meeting at whatever location that it's going to be held at. It was a pleasure to meet with you and I, I enjoyed discussing you know the finance team's meeting i'm excited about the opportunity to and obviously you would change this up a little bit more right you're not lending your skills but maybe you are who knows again right it all depends on the situation does that make sense yes awesome the next template i've got for you it would be a i actually can't see because we're covering it interview follow-up email so again this is just to follow up it's not so much a, to say thank you after an interview this one would be more for um i mean yeah, these two can, following up yeah following up these, they made a decision exactly exactly so these two these this email and the previous one could be um joined together as one email but in this case i just kind of separated them to show more examples but um, this is just a follow up, right? Um, say you interview on Monday, you can send the thank you email Monday afternoon, maybe even Tuesday. And then this follow up email would be sent, let's say Friday, right? So there's a little bit of time afterwards. So this email is specifically just trying to figure out what's going on with the job that I interviewed for, right? So it's kind of like, hey, I interviewed a week ago. Have you made a decision yet? It's kind of what this email is saying, yeah? Yeah, because some companies, unfortunately, you know, especially for someone looking for a job, um, you know, they take a while, and it, it will be nice, uh, if, you know, to to get, um, you know, an email or a phone call. You know, I'm sorry that we decided to go with another candidate, you know, that suits the position better. Instead of you just like waiting and waiting and waiting. Exactly, exactly. And so if you are really interested in this job opening or in this position, then a thank you email is definitely going to make them remember you. A follow-up email might, I mean, hopefully they haven't already made a decision, but then you they get your follow-up email. They might think, oh, this person is actually interested. They're following up. They might, um, they might translate that follow-up to the actual workplace and think, oh, if they are really interested now, then maybe when if we give them the job, they'll actually be interested in doing the job, right? So it all just kind of shows a little bit more personality, a little bit more seriousness in the position. Uh -huh. Yeah. All right. So the next one, professional email requesting clarification. So this one, I feel like it could be your area, right? And of course, all of these, these are all templates um, that can be changed, of course. So in this case, hello, in your case, as you like to greet, good morning, Mr. Uh, Mr. Smith. Thank you for taking time to reach out to me about uh, Friday's meeting. Could you please provide me with some additional information so I can better understand your request? I'd like to assist you as quickly as possible. If you could please detail the three most important points that you need my help with, that would help speed up the process. Once I have this clarification, I'll be able to assist you more effectively. Thank you. Karina, right? Uh -huh. So this is clarification. So say you already got an email from from Mrs. Jones asking you to, I don't know, um, 
get all of the snacks for next month's meeting, right? But you're like, well, who's going to be there? Um, are there any food allergies? Is there anything in particular that you need? Is this a morning meeting or an afternoon meeting? Because I either need to get coffee or I need to get sodas, right? That kind of, you're needing clarification, right? So this could be a, an example email that you could send. Um, of course, thank you for taking the time to reach out to me about next month's meeting. Uh, provide, provide me with additional information. I'd like to assist you as quickly as possible. So that sentence right there is already telling your reader, oh, okay, she wants to assist me as quickly as possible. So I need to hurry up and get her the information. Yeah, so it kind of adds a little oh. bit of a rush. Um, if you could please detail the three most important points, if, this could even be changed. If you were to use the examples that I just gave you, if you could please detail the date, time, and guess um, that you need my help with, or obviously you wouldn't say that, but if you could please detail uh, the date and time, as well as the um, guess and uh, location, um, that would help speed up the process, yeah? And of course, your call to action, once I have this clarification, I'll be able to assist you more effectively. Yeah, does this make sense a little bit? Yes. Nice. Any questions about this? No. All right. Very cool. Very good. All right. So now we get into declining a job offer, right? And this, I don't know that, um, I don't know that I've ever actually heard anybody needing to email um, a potential employer about saying no to a job, but it happens, right? It could definitely happen. So this could be a template that we could definitely use. Um, thank you for offering me the position. I appreciate you taking the time to consider me, um, but eh, this is not the best fit for my goals at this time, right? <clears throat> I have wow. decided to accept another position or I've decided to do something else. Thank you again for your time and support. Good luck finding someone else though, right? Yeah. So yes. what's something in specifically in terms of the verbiage or the vocabulary that you saw in all of these templates um, that you think you could apply to your work, um, your work emails? Um, at the bottom, I just thank you again for taking the, um, thank you, thank you, thank you again for taking the time to support um, the bottom. Uh, also, at the beginning, when you're thanking them mm -hmm. for taking the time to, you know, to give you the job, the interview, or the position, yeah. Yeah. the information. Exactly. Yeah, very good. So, um, I've got a couple more templates for you, but for these last couple templates, notice the specific words that the e these emails are using, okay? so. I don't want to get too much into grammar and, oh, you're using passive voice or you're using you know, nah, not so much the grammar, but just kind of see what you can notice about the vocabulary. Yeah. So this email is requesting an introduction. So maybe you are emailing a coworker because you want uh, a coworker who works in a different department, but you want to go work in that department. Right. So you would email this coworker asking them to introduce you to their boss, for example. Right. So hello or good afternoon, Mr. Smith. I've been, um, I've been looking to transfer to the HR department and noticed that you have worked with so and so. Uh, have worked with Mrs. Jones. I was hoping that you would introduce me, that you could introduce me, so that I can uh, continue to grow within the company. I've provided a sample introduction with some detail on the project that I'm working on below, but please feel free to customize this yourself. Don't hesitate to let me know if I can provide any additional information. I hope you're doing well and look forward to catching up with you more soon. Thank you for any assistance that you can provide. Best, Isabel. So really quickly, so of course, this is obviously asking for an introduction, right? Um, but in terms of the vocabulary, what kind of words are you noticing here? And then maybe you've noticed them in the other emails as well. Um, um, when you say, like, feel free to customize 
can hesitate to call me. Don't hesitate to let me know and mm -hmm. if I can provide additional information. Yeah, nice. So that's a, that's a phrase that you could definitely use in your workplace, right? Mm -hmm. I feel so like I let, me, let know. me know if I can provide any additional information. Yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly. Okay. Yeah, I feel like just the phrase let me know or don't hesitate to let me know or feel free to let me know. I feel like that phrase is very common, which I mean, it should be yes. in a workplace, right? Same thing, yes. if I can provide additional information, again, it's still the same um, vocabulary that, that is acceptable in a workplace, yeah? What about the word could? Uh, third line down, could, right here. I was hoping that you could introduce me. Mm -hmm. I was hoping that you could introduce me so that I could say. Does it sound different to you if you were to say, I was hoping that you would introduce me? Or does it sound the same to you? Mm, if, you know, it would sound different if I say, I was hoping that you can introduce me. Well, there's a difference. Okay. If I say, uh, I was hoping that you could introduce me, it's different from if I say, I was hoping that you could, you can't. What you tell me that <laughs> <laughs> right so um so can typically sounds a little bit more informal um can you close the door right could you close the door would you close the door it just it all means the exact same thing but it just sounds respectful. less informal exactly informal versus formal respectful versus not respectful it's just that kind of um, situation i think we talked about this actually in a i forget what the what the topic was for the live video that we did the live facebook live class that we did but we talked about the differences between can would can um could um may might right so they basically mean the same thing some of these words in this situation could would can it has the same meaning but the respect level changes so i was hoping that you can introduce me it's kind of more like you're talking to a friend versus I was hoping that you would introduce me. That sounds a little bit more, a little bit more powerful, I would say. Like would introduce me is like, almost like do it, if that makes a little bit of sense. But if you say, if you could introduce me, it's, it's asking, but it's not um, being disrespectful, if that makes sense. So words like could, uh, may, even might. Um, I was hoping that you might introduce me. That would work as well. Um, so basically, this is what I'm just trying to point out here. The, the specific words, the vocabulary that you choose to use also matters, right? Um, I mean, you could even, you could even uh, bring this to, I was hoping that you would, right? Because would, again, sounds a little bit more powerful. I was hoping that you would um, send me your report by Friday, September 10th. Does that make sense? No, I was hoping that you would send me your report by this day. Uh, I don't know. It's just so hard for me to do stuff because I'm like, I was hoping. It's like, oh, I need it. Yeah. Yeah. And this is where, and okay, so this is where, writing um how do i explain this so writing is gonna be a little tricky so think of like when you're texting right so when you're texting a friend when you're texting family even um i i, I hear it a lot in um like on tv shows like talk shows or reality shows where a boyfriend and a girlfriend will fight via text and it's almost like you just never really know the tone of, of how the other person is writing because you can't hear tone, right? And so when you're writing, even if you use formal language and more respectful language, it's still, it's still just writing. There's no tone to it. There's no body language. There's no facial expressions. So when it comes to writing, uh, especially at work, using the most uh formal verbiage that you can is honestly it's the best thing ever it's um it's kind of the difference between 
I was hoping that you would introduce me. No, I was hoping that you would send me your report by this Friday versus please send me this report by, please send me your report by Friday, right? So one, the first one is more like, oh, please, can you send it to me? I kind of really need it, yeah? So it's still being a little bit nice and polite versus the other one, please send me your report by Friday is more, the way that I imagine it is more like my boss saying that to me. Does that make sense? Um, I guess. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's uh, like I said, it's writing, so it's a little bit different. So, what I would suggest for you, if if um using this, so I would suggest first of all, uh, using this verbiage in your writing. So, using the sentence that we're working on right now. I was hoping that you would send me your report by Friday, two p.m. Um, and then maybe following up with a phone call. You know, um, because again, you can hear tone in a phone call. You can, um, you know, laugh if you wanted to. And that's where your your personality or your sense of humor can come across a little bit easier when you're speaking versus when you're writing. Does that make sense? I don't have sense of humor at work. I, am, I need to work. I need stuff to get my, my work done. So is there a difference where if I were to say, I would like to receive this information by this day at this time. That sounds a, that sounds more, um, what would be the word? I would like to receive this information. Um, again, it just sounds, I don't know what the word is that I'm looking for. It, it's, is it unprofessional? I wouldn't necessarily say unprofessional. But I wouldn't also say that it's the most respectful, if that makes sense. So it's, it's like I said, it's not even, it's respectful, of course. But it, again, it just kind of, it's like when your boss is telling you, hey, Isabel, get me, get me Karina on the line. It's like, okay, just do it. There's no question. You know, it's like a, it's like a boss telling you what to do. Versus if he, my boss were to say, um, good afternoon, Isabel, could you please get Karina on the phone for me? That's like, oh, whoa, yeah, of course, I would love to help you out, All right? So it just, it's more a matter of being polite. Okay. <laughs> Do you not want to be polite or what? What is this? Yes. Yes, I want to be polite. It's just that I've been doing this for four years, and what all of a sudden I'm gonna be being, I'm gonna start being polite. So I'm gonna feel that oh, I haven't been polite. Yeah. Well, so in, and like we said at the beginning, everything is always depending on something. In your specific situation, you've been at this place for four years. Let's assume you've been with the same people for four years. I'm sure you've already interacted face to face with them at some point yeah. during these four years. So I feel like at this point, they know uh, your personality and who you are as a person. So that when you write to them, maybe, I mean, obviously, if you just write, um, good morning, Mr. Jones, please remember that I am leaving early tomorrow afternoon, I'll, that I'm leaving tomorrow at 2 p.m. Uh, for my doctor's appointment. Um, let me know if you have any questions, Karina. If you literally just wrote that to Mr. Jones, I'm sure he would know, oh, this is just a reminder. Does that make sense? Now, what was I going to say? <laughs> if the, if now the people you're emailing are starting to complain or they're starting to have concerns about the way you're writing, then there might be a change that needs to happen. But if they're not complaining, I would assume it's because they already know who you are. They know you as a person, your tone, you know, maybe you're a happy person, you're giggly all the time. So if you write a more serious email, then they might just take it as, oh, she must be really busy or she must really need this or uh, maybe she's just having a bad day. Does that make sense? Yes. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay. Do you have, I think I have actually one more. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So this is um, kind of the same as the previous template, but this one is when you're asking for a uh, professional introduction. 
And so let me just move this really quick. Yeah, e making a professional introduction, exactly. So the previous email was asking, like me asking you to introduce me to your boss. This email is obviously going to be sent to both people. So this email would be the, hey boss, meet my coworker, right? That's what this email says. So I'd like to introduce you to so-and-so. He is whatever job title, um, looking to connect with, human resources uh i think you might be a good fit for this project or he might be a good fit or she might be a good fit and i wanted to help you to connect with one another um and then of course just a little bit more explanation but um yeah do you have any other questions anything else that um maybe something else that's standing out to you or any other concerns uh no no actually but uh, just introduction i'd like to you know just mm -hmm start emails by using those phrases. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. So I think, oh yeah, look at that. I have one more, requesting a client recommendation. This is funny. I think this is actually the last one. Um, but yeah, so this is just another template asking for recommendations, right? So maybe you need, um, maybe you got to plan a meeting, Karina, and you need, um, recommendations for a location or maybe recommendations for um snacks again i don't know anything like that um this would kind of be a little bit more of a template and of course like we said and like we keep saying it always depends on everything <laughs> yeah mm -hmm. very good all righty so now to summarize so Start off obviously with a with an informative subject line. So super uh, concise, super clear, um, leaving work early tomorrow or reminder colon the two dots um, leaving at 2 p.m. Friday, September 10th. You know, something super, super simple, super, super to the point. Uh, also a polite greeting. So we've kind of already talked about this. Hello, Mr. Jones. Dear Mr. Jones, good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Yeah, those are all super polite. Um, I would definitely recommend using those. If you use anything else, it kind of sounds more friendly, which then makes it a little bit less workplace. Uh, it's just, it just, of course, it just depends on who you're emailing. Um, address the point immediately. So let's talk about this. What is an example of a typical email that you send? Um, maybe on a daily basis or pretty regularly? Um, you know, request an information. I uh, should go, good afternoon. May I request, uh, you know, this report on this so-and-so person? Are you normally you. sending this email to one person or are you sending it to a group of people? Usually, sometimes one, sometimes two or three. Okay. Nice. So yeah, exactly. It's kind of like what you were already saying. Um, good afternoon, board of directors. Um, very quick. I go in a workplace or a more professional setting um, or a more formal setting. I always like to thank uh, my recipient first, um, even if it's just a simple line as thank you. Uh, thank you kindly for taking the time to read my email. Yeah, thank you so much for taking a minute, taking a moment of your time, you know, to read my email or, you know, some sort of thank you, a little bit of appreciation is always nice. Uh, but then um, you were asking for information, right? Yes, uh, like uh, today, like sending an agenda package, uh, send it to a whole board of directors, a lot of people. Mm -hmm. And I uh, much said, good afternoon, everyone. It's had actually find the so-and-so package for next week Thursday January 1st meeting mm -hmm. yeah and honestly that's so then based on what you just said you've got we didn't talk about the subject line but I assume you're telling them in the subject what the email is about you've got the polite yeah. greeting the good morning good afternoon that's really good you're addressing the point immediately which is which is great my only concern now is that I didn't hear some sort of, um, well, like I just said, like a thank you. 
um, but it doesn't really even have to be a thank you, right? It's uh, It could even just be like an icebreaker, which is normal for a five paragraph essay. Some sort of icebreaker, maybe like a good morning, everyone. I hope your week, if it's on a Monday, for example, I hope your week is getting started, is getting started on the right foot. Please see the attached, blah, 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 blah. Right? So it's just kind of a little bit of an icebreaker. Um, and then the other thing is that I didn't hear a call to action. So is this just you giving them information? Yeah, just giving them the agenda, distributing the agenda to the board members for them to attend the meeting. Aha, uh -huh, okay. So then do they need to have read the agenda before the meeting? They know they should. Okay, well then that would be your call to action. So like we said, good morning, everyone. Um, let's hope this week goes great for everyone. Please see the attached agenda packet for Friday, September 10th. Um, it, I mean, something even as simple as, yeah, something even as simple as um, do make sure to read ahead of time. Otherwise, feel free to let me know if you have any questions. Does that make sense? There's, yeah. there's got to be a little bit of a call to action. Now, that's if we were to follow this, uh, these steps, right? Um, like we said earlier, you've been at this place for four years. Um, unless people are complaining that, hey, Karina, you're too direct in your emails, or hey, Karina, uh, I don't like the way you talk to me in these emails, uh, then I personally- I'm work on. <laughs> I mean, that's what I'm saying. Unless they're complaining, then you're just getting the information out there. And so, you know, personally, I'm, I mean, as you can see all over social media and WhatsApp and everywhere, I'm more, I'm definitely a, a happy, bubbly kind of personality. And so in my emails, even in professional emails, there's always some sort of, I'm trying to make you laugh, or at least I'm trying to make you smile within my email. But that's my personality. Um, coming through uh, the email. And so if that's not your personality, if you're more of a um, super serious, straight to the point, you know, I just go to work kind of personality or kind of um, attitude maybe, then hey, just go straight to the point and just be you, be you and be who you are, right? So it's huh. not, yeah? Yeah, I mean, I guess, uh, I guess, yeah, nobody complaining from the very beginning. Um, uh, even though I did not take it as a compliment at the, at the beginning, but it was, um, this is what happened at the beginning where um, uh, we had an agenda for a meeting. I requested information uh, for a coworker who was also doing her own meeting agenda. She came, she came visited to my office. My boss was there and we were going to have another meeting and she made a comment, oh, yeah, over there, they say you're very, you're, you're pretty, you're bossy. And I'm like, no, I'm not bossy. But my, my boss says, oh, no, I like that. They, that's respect. I'm like, hmm, okay. There so, you go. And, 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 you know, now it's like my, my boss, he's like, okay, all the, the recording secretaries that do the minutes for the, the meetings, I like, know, it's like, no, oh, they're the boss. They're the boss. So sometimes some committee chairs, it's like, and the boss. Mrs. Yeah. So, I mean, so, that could be, I mean, you could, you can choose to take well, that whichever way you want to take it, right? So if you wanted to take it based on what everyone else is saying that you're coming across as bossy, that might be because you're not adding a little bit of, like I, the example that I gave, um, we hope your week gets started off to a great, you know, it, a great start or something, or, um, you know, have a great weekend, everyone. You know, there's there's no icebreaker. Uh, there could be the language that you're using could be more like you were saying, attach, please find the agenda packet versus um, please find the agenda packet, right? Um, so that's, those could be reasons why you're coming across bossy. But like I was saying, if if you want to change that perception of everyone else, then you've got some some um, some vocabulary, right, to include in, in your emails. But if you're more concerned about impressing your boss, who obviously is impressed by you, 
then and he's okay and he's happy with the way that you're running things and you're emailing people then there's nothing to change right yeah. well, I haven't gotten complaining it's just that somebody started helping me and then and, and it's kind of letting me know that I'm too direct so that's why I'm okay well okay fine let me let me try some yeah so yeah, I mean, this is great. I, I'm going to definitely start little by little, mm-hmm. you know, in, introducing, incorporating this certain um, phrases mm-hmm. into my emails. So, yeah. This, yeah. And like I said, it's it just depends on who you are trying to impress. Um, it also depends on the situation, of course, and there's a whole lot of factors, right? So just take it one email at a time. And, um, you know, if you are, I mean, I don't know, my suggestion would be if you're emailing someone or you're emailing a group of people where in that group there's one person that, say, the one person who has told you that you're you're very direct, maybe in that email try to be a little bit more polite. Try to add a little fluff, right? A little bit of, um, you know, niceness or, or however they would say. But, um, I mean, if, if no one else is complaining, then... You can't please everyone, right? There's, I mean, you are who you are, and that's kind of just. At at some point, we can. At some point, we need to realize that we're not going to make everyone happy, and so in a workplace, it's all. I feel like it's a little bit trickier because, of course, you're you have to kind of get along with your coworkers and your colleagues, but you know they also have to realize that this is you and this is how you write, and I mean you could always improve, but. I mean, as long as you're not having grammar mistakes or spelling mistakes, I think that's I think that's already a good start. No, nowadays I just wait for the if I'm not uh, sure about how to spell a word, I just wait for that red line and. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly, and that's kind of or the blue line for grammar, right? Yeah. No. Thankfully, we have computers and technology that help us out. Yeah, but this is definitely a great information. I will uh, and start. I'm gonna start incorporating, um, you know, little by little. That yeah. sometimes, you know, at the, especially at the beginning. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, yeah. that's very good. And of course, if you ever have any questions, of course, you're always welcome to ask. Um, that's all I have for you today. Do you have any other questions? No, no, this has been wonderful. Thank you very much. I really enjoy it. And as I always enjoy the Monday free speaking English classes. And, yeah, yeah, perfect. Uh, you know, I've learned a lot. Thank you very much, Teacher Isabel, for of your time. Of course, of course, no problem. Yeah, so for those of you watching us on the video, of course, like Karina just mentioned, she actually just won this class um, from the Monday speaking practice. So I explained this at the start of this video, but if you missed it for whatever reason, You have to attend that class. Well, I don't like calling it a class because I'm not actually teaching anything. This is a practice. So you learn your speaking, your vocabulary um, outside of this class, outside of this practice. And then you come to this speaking practice on Mondays and then you get you have the opportunity to implement and to actually practice what you know and what you've learned. Um, And then so of the students who go to this Monday practice, we do a little raffle and then someone wins this class and this class is meant to be 45 to 60 minutes um, where I get to just kind of help you out with pretty much anything that you need. So will I see you at this coming Monday's practice? Yes, of course. Nice. Very good. And remember, we have IG, Facebook, we're on YouTube, we're on Twitter, pretty much every social media, almost every social media platform. Um, and then don't forget to let your friends and family know whoever is, uh, you know, learning English as well. Um, the one thing I don't have on here and I forgot is the WhatsApp speaking group. So I post almost daily, I post speaking topics. So we get on WhatsApp and we all just kind of answer the question and have, uh, sometimes we create some really good uh, dialogue and conversation. And so my phone just goes bzz, 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 constantly because everyone's responding. So if you want to join that, of course, you're more than welcome to. And if you ever have any other questions or comments, of course, just let us know. All right. Thank you very much. Yeah, no problem, Karina. I will see you on Monday. Have a great weekend. And uh, yeah, I'll see you on Monday. Bye-bye. Thank you very much. Bye.